friends, and welcome back to Kids Coast at Home. We are so glad that you're joining us today. My name is Miss Jackie, and we are so excited for another fun-packed day full of games and God's Word. Now, before we get started, we got to warm up our bodies, okay? So I have some friends with me, and we want you to join us at home to warm up, all right? So let's get started with some reach-ups. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your arm and reach it all the way to the other side, okay? So let's do five of those. That's one. Two, make sure you reach all the way up. Three, like you're grabbing an apple from a tree. Four, five, all right, good job. Next, we're gonna do five hip circles. So hip circles look like this. Take your hips all the way around, all right? So let's do five of those. One, two, three, really getting warmed up. Four, five, good job, y'all doing great. All right, now, I know you don't wanna do this, but we just gotta warm up our core just a little bit, and we're gonna do a plank. Now, a plank looks like this. You're gonna get down on the ground, all right? So we're gonna hold this for 10 seconds. Can y'all count to 10 for me? Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, and burn! Seven, eight, nine, 10, whoo! Oh goodness. I don't know about y'all, but that one took me out. Whoo, all right, I'm feeling warm. I'm feeling ready to go. Now, you know we gotta do a little dance before we head out into games. So, my friend Myla is gonna show us how to do the floss. Myla, can you show us? There it is, perfect. All right, let's join her. Let's do the floss. Let's do the floss, 10 seconds, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job, friends. Y'all are doing so great. Good job. Good job. Now, let's head in with Kaylee for some fun games. Hey, everyone. Welcome to our first game today. Jackie, we are playing One to Say, One to Go, Smell Edition. Huh. I don't, don't know worry. Don't worry. We're not smelling anything. Okay. Okay? We're going to see a couple of items pop up on the screen. We just have to pick which one are we keeping and which one are we getting rid of forever. It's not really gonna go anywhere, but which one would we prefer to leave forever? Okay. All right, that good deal? Fun. No winners, no losers, just a simple choice. All right, let's take a look at our first one. A fresh flower or a fresh cookie, which one are you keeping and which one are you like, well, I guess we'll never smell that again. This one's hard. I'm keeping the fresh cookie immediately. There's just no way. I can't get rid of that smell. I love fresh flowers, though. They do but smell real good. Fresh cookie, I can't deny it's, it's the best thing yeah. ever. I'm going cookie. What did you guys choose? Good choices. All right, let's see our next one. A campfire or fresh cut grass? I do love both of them, but I think I'm going campfire to yeah, keep. Yeah, I think I'm going campfire. Keeping that. Keep. Okay, you guys? All right, awesome. Wait, next I heard one. Some grass in there. I like grass. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's, some grass it's like a are. nice fresh smell. Yes. It's good. Fresh. Good. All right, an ocean breeze or mountain air? Oh, ocean breeze for sure. Keeping that? Yeah, I'm keeping that. Yeah, I think I'm leaning towards that one too. But I will say, if the mountain air means I'm smelling like a lot of pine trees and stuff, mm. it's just not guaranteed. I don't see it on there. Yeah. So I'll go ocean breeze with you as well. What do you guys think? Good choices. All right, next one. A skunk or a dirty diaper? Ooh. Well, these are bad choices. <laughs> Can we get bad. rid of both? <laughs> that would be nice. Um, well, I definitely don't want a skunk. Yeah, smell. I feel like by default, that one might yeah. have to go. But it's not like I want to keep the dirty diaper smell. Right, that's better than a skunk. Yeah, right. I guess I'm that's going dirty going. diaper, I don't know. What do you guys think? All right. Good, okay. Yeah. I know some of you have little siblings and you're like, I'll keep the smell of the skunk yeah. and get rid of the dirty <laughs> diaper for sure. All yeah. right, next one. Gasoline or sardines? Ooh. I mean, sardines are kind of gross smelling. Yeah, but for I sure. hate the smell of gas. Okay, well, we might be going different ways on this one because yeah. I'm getting rid of the sardine smell. I'm keeping the sardines. All right. Yeah. What about you guys? 
I know, they're both gross. Yeah. Good choice though. All right, next one. Citrus or chocolate? Mm. Can never get rid of the smell of chocolate. Even though citrus, I love girl. citrus so much. You're going citrus? citrus. Yeah, I'm going okay. citrus. Okay, yeah. nice. What about you guys? Very mixed responses. Yeah. That's what I expected. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got two left. Let's take a look at our next one. Peppermint or coffee? Okay, so I love the smell of coffee, mm -hmm. but I cannot stand the taste of it. I do okay. not drink it at all, okay. but the smell is so good. Oh, I do love the smell of coffee. I'm yeah. going coffee. I'm and keeping I do that one. Yeah, keeping that one. Peppermint, it's really only a smell I'd want to smell at like Christmas time, anyways. That's true. So it's not that big of a loss. Yeah. All right, what'd you guys choose? Awesome. All right, next one. Rotten milk or rotten eggs? Oh, we're going out on a bad one. No. Hmm. Did you come up with these choices? I did not. I did not. I... Uh, I don't really, I don't know if I really know what rotten egg smells like, to be honest with you. Yeah. I've smelled rotten milk and it's disgusting. So we're just gonna get rid of that one for me. I'll keep the rotten egg. I just don't actually know what it smells like. I'm gonna let go of the rotten eggs. All right. Yeah. Okay, what'd bad. you guys choose? Awesome. All right, we're gonna go find some other great smells. Yes. You guys, check this out. Wow, friends, that was so much fun with Kaylee playing games. Now it's time for a fun, creative moment. Now don't forget to tell your parents to submit your artwork at the Kids Coast Instagram, okay? So that you can see your artwork here at Kids Coast at home. Now let's grab our paper, let's grab our colored pencils and our markers, and let's have a seat on the ground and get ready for a fun art segment with Miss Whitney. Hey art friends, welcome. I'm so glad you could join me today. Before we get started, it is time to shout out our Kids Coast at Home student who sent in this amazing piece of art. We wanna say thank you so much for sharing your beautiful creativity with us. We were so excited to receive it. And if you want to send in your piece of art, make sure your parents know to take a photo of it upload it to Instagram and tag us at Kids Coast. We would love to see it and maybe you will get featured sometime in the near future. Well, this month we're talking about peace. And I have a little story for you about peace between some family members. So two family members, Abram and Lot, needed to make peace between each other. They were both responsible for a lot of people and a lot of animals. And the way that they decided to make peace was to choose to live separately in different lands. And so today we are gonna do a drawing that represents their nomadic lifestyle. That's a big word, isn't it? Nomadic. A nomad is someone who lives a transient lifestyle, which means that they move around from place to place depending on what they need or what they, uh, where they need to go. And so we are gonna draw a tent to represent that kind of life. Have you ever camped before? If you have or haven't, maybe this piece of art is something that will inspire you to go on your next camping trip. So let's get started. Today, we need the same things that we need every week. That would be something to color with. I have markers today, a black Sharpie or a black washable marker to go over our pencil lines, a pencil, an eraser, and a piece of paper or two, just to make sure your art doesn't bleed through onto the surface where you're working. All right, y'all, let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a large triangle right here on our piece of paper. So here is our large triangle. 
does not have to be perfect, as always, with a line right down the center. There we go. That represents the tent opening. Okay, next up, we are going to draw the back side of the tent. And this is accomplished by drawing two horizontal lines that go towards that upper corner, that upper right-hand corner. So let's do the top one first. I want you to watch me first and then do yours. So we start at the top of the triangle and draw a line towards the upper right-hand corner. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom horizontal line towards the upper right hand corner so they're parallel to each other. Now you do yours, top and bottom, and then you are going to add a line to connect the two together. There you go. All right, there is our tent. Isn't it cool how it looks a little bit 3D? I think that's really neat. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is do some tent pegs. So let's draw a short line from the lower left-hand corner of your triangle with a circle at the end, that's our tent peg. We're gonna do another one on this corner, the lower right-hand corner. Short line with a circle. Well done, artist, I know you're doing great. And then finally, in the back corner, Another short line with a circle. Awesome, now your tent is not gonna fly away in the wind. Good job. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is draw a horizon. Now I've never done this with you before, I've never taught you how to draw a horizon, but learning how to draw a horizon is a really, really important thing to do when you're learning art. So the way to draw a horizon is to draw a straight line all the way across the upper third of your page. But if I did that right now and just went straight across, I would cut my tent in half. So what we're gonna do is we're going to draw a line until we hit our tent, pick up our pencil, and go to the same spot on the other side of the tent, and then finish drawing our line. Can you do that with me? Here we go. All right, now pick up your pencil, go to the other side of the tent, and then finish drawing your line. All right, awesome, now you have drawn your horizon line. Then we're gonna draw some grass. I love grass, how about you guys? This is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna do a zigzag anywhere in this lower half that you want. I want some grass right here, and then I want some grass in this spot too. So let's draw another zigzag. Well done. Oh, that looks like a cool place to hang out. And then I think I wanna make my scene a nighttime scene. So I'm gonna draw a moon and some stars. So the way that you draw a moon is we're gonna start with a circle. And it's important to do this in pencil so that you can erase the line. And once you do your circle, we're gonna draw a half circle in the middle. And then we're gonna erase the other half of the circle. And that is a crescent moon. Now, if you don't have a eraser, that is a-okay. You can also draw a full moon and just leave it there, or you could make that a sun, which would also be super cool. Now we're gonna draw some stars. These are what I like to call my quick stars. So we're gonna draw little X's with a line straight through the middle. I'm gonna do three of those. So two, three, and then I'm gonna do some more stars over here in the right corner. One, two, three. Fantastic! Now we have our outline of our tent. So I'm gonna go over this in my Sharpie, or you could do it in your black colored pencil, black crayon, or your black washable marker. Let's go.
Well done. If you have any pencil lines that you'd like to erase, you can go ahead and do that now. Awesome job, artist. Now we've reached our favorite part. It's time to color. Now, I'm gonna give you the freedom to choose whatever color you would like to color your tent. I am choosing my favorite color, which is red, but you can choose any color that you would like. I can't wait to see what you picked. Why don't you yell out at me right now what color you're gonna color your tent. Oh, I hear blue. I hear some yellow. I even hear some pink. Oh, I love that, that's very exciting. I like a pink tent. Wonderful. I can't wait to see them. Okay, now let's get going coloring. So I'm gonna teach you one of the tricks that I really like to do when I'm coloring um, and I wanna color in the lines. So instead of just going and coloring in the middle, I like to outline the edge first because I feel like that gives me a little more control over where the color goes. It gives me almost like a nice border as I color a thicker border than the black line so that I know where I'm stopping, which is nice. So as we color, let's have a chat. Raise your hand if you have ever gone camping. All right, if you notice, I did not raise my hand because I have never gone camping. I know, I know, I know that sounds so silly, but I am not a, I'm not a camper kind of girl. It's just not my jam. Now, my husband really likes to camp and his family likes to camp. And so my daughters have had the opportunity to go camping. They have camped in a camper and they have camped in a tent before as well. We like to do the tent camping at our house. Um, just in case anybody gets cold or wants to come inside in the middle of the night, they can let me know. Dad can stay outside with the other ones and I can stay inside because you know I'm not gonna go out there and sleep in a tent. But maybe you've gone camping before and you love it. What are the activities that you enjoy doing when you go camping? Some of the things I think about when I think about camping are roasting marshmallows by the fire and having s'mores. I also think about fishing. How many of you like to fish? I think fishing is cool, but it kind of grosses me out to think about slimy fish. What are some other camping act activities that you've done before? You like to meet other campers and explore. Maybe you camp at the beach. A lot of people camp at the beach or near the beach or at a state park. Okay, when you are done coloring in your tent, we can move on and start coloring some other things. Next up, we're gonna do the grass and I'm gonna do traditional green grass today. And if you notice, I did not leave a lot of room to color in the grass. And so what I'm gonna do is color around my black line. So with my marker, I can just go straight over it like this. But if you want to, if you're doing it with crayon, you can just go around the outside like this. And these are just upside down V's. And it makes green grass, little sprigs of green grass. Hey, maybe we'll even draw a flower on this one. So let's draw a stem and a leaf, and then we'll come back and we'll draw the flower petals. It's springtime, or almost springtime in March, and it reminds me often of the new life that God brings in the spring. We start seeing birds again, and we start seeing, um, the leaves grow on the trees, which also means that we start getting some pollen. Do you guys have allergies from pollen? I do. It's terrible. All right, we'll draw some flower petals. You can just draw circles in a big circle. 
and then one big one right in the middle. Let's do that again. Little circles. And then a big circle right in the middle. Oh, those flowers are gorgeous. And finally, the last thing that we're gonna draw and color in is the moon. And I'm gonna make my moon yellow. So let's remember our Bible story today as we wrap up our drawing time that Abram and Lot decided to make peace by choosing to live in separate lands. And that is what our tent is representative of today, is that nomadic, do you remember that word? Say it with me, nomadic lifestyle. And now, hold up your art, let me see it. Oh man, well done, I'm so proud of you. You did such a great job. Don't forget to have mom and dad take a picture of this, upload it to Instagram, and tag us at Kid, Kids Coast and we will be able to see your art and maybe you will be featured in the future, in a future episode. And again, thank you so much for joining me. I love our time together and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, welcome to Kids Coast. My name is Sarah. And I'm Jack. And this is the place where we learn about life apps. And this month we're learning about- Oh, the drum roll. Oh, Come on kids, let's do a big drum roll together. And Sarah. Mm, okay, let's say it on the count of three. One, two, three! Peace is proving you, you care more, more about each other than winning an argument. argument. It can be tough to always live at peace with each other, but when we remember how God made peace with us by sending Jesus to be our savior, that makes us want to make peace with others. And today, we'll find out how we can show we care by letting go of what's fair. Oh, well, this will be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just pause for one second. Mm -hmm. Why are you wearing a vest and a construction hat? Oh, this? Yeah. Ah. It's just, you know, you look a little like Bob the Builder, <laughs> Jack the Builder. You know Sarah, I mean? yeah. I'm quite glad you asked. Uh, you yeah. see, I was playing with my cousins, Emily and Max, and we were all playing with Legos. We love Legos. Mm. Do you like Legos too? You too? Mm. Great. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so you're wearing a hat and a vest because you were building with Legos, builder? Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe. Okay, yeah. well, yeah. explain. We would love to hear why. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> there we were. Emily wanted to build a house with a chimney. Mm. Mm -hmm. Max mm -hmm. wanted to build a spaceship with jets. Mm. <laughs> I was trying to build a tower with little windows. Okay. Oh, yeah. Anyway, everything was totally fine until. Until what? Okay, I spotted a clear red Lego brick that would have been a perfect beacon on top of my tower, mm. but Emily and Max both went for the same piece. Emily needed the clear red brick to look like fire in her fireplace. Oh, yeah, yeah. Max wanted the clear red brick to use as blasters in the jets, and mm. there was only one like it. And guess what? What? We all wanted it. <laughs> Goodness. Okay, so what happened? Like, how well, did you decide, you okay. know? Before I could even grab it, Emily and Max both already had a pretty good grip on it. Mm. They both pulled as hard as they could. Back and forth and back and forth. Harder and harder. And then... Who got it? Neither one. Yeah. They both pulled so hard, the piece went flying up in the air. It came down like a rock and knocked off Emily's chimney. <laughs> she was so mad. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then Emily mm. took that piece and threw it at Max's spaceship. Guess what? Knocked a whole wing off of Max's spaceship. Next thing I knew, Lego bricks were flying everywhere. I had to take cover behind the sofa. It was a full on war, Sarah. <laughs> This sounds intense, like yeah. a pretty big fight. I know, I couldn't believe it. But then I came from behind my fort and asked Emily and Max if they were okay if we just took all the Legos and just focus on building Max's spaceship and Emily's house with the chimney. Oh, but what about your tower? Well, I knew if I gave them all the Legos from my yeah. tower, you know, they would have enough red blocks to go around and do both of their projects. I mean, that's a good point, but it's unfair to you. You didn't get to finish your tower. 
Well, yeah, but I care too much about our friendship together to let a red block crash down our relationship. It's, it's kind of like our bottom line today. You can mm. show you care by letting go of what's fair. Mm. That's really nice of you, and that makes sense. Um, what doesn't make sense is still why you're wearing a hat and a vest. Well, you could say, you know, Sarah, it's for protection. You know, I'm going back over the later to play more Legos and I okay. figured it's better to be prepared in case another Lego battle breaks out. Oh. I mean, plus it's code anyway to uh, wear this on a construction site. <laughs> right, makes total sense. Okay, well, I think that's all for today. So we'll see you next time. Just don't wear this next week, okay? <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, good, good. Welcome back for our second game. This time we are playing Where's the Ball Ping Pong Edition. So it's been a while since we've played one of these, but we have done it before. The way this works is there's going to be a picture and we'll see the ping pong ball in a few different spots. We just have to guess which one is the correct one in the picture and which ones have been photoshopped. Let's take a look at our first one so we can see what we're doing. All right, so we have two choices. Is it number one or number two? Is the actual one that was in the picture when it was taken? I I think I'm gonna go with number one. I'm gonna go with number one. Okay, what do you guys think? All right, let's take a look. Yes, all, all right. right, we're off to a good start. Yes. That was probably the easiest picture because we usually add okay. more ping pong balls in. Okay. Let's take a look at our next one. Get my one. eyes ready. All right, one, two, and three all the way up there by her head. Um, mm. Maybe... I think I'm gonna go with three, actually. I'm not sure how, but I'm, I'm gonna going go with, with it. one. Okay. I'm gonna go with one. All right, you guys, good choice. Let's see. Ah, <laughs> and we're both wrong. And we're wrong. All right, well, that's fine. We'll get it next time. Yes. Let's see, I told you we'd get a little bit trickier. Next one. All right, we've oh, got no. one, two, three, and four, and they're all like in a row. They're so close to each other. Um, I think I'm going three on this one. I'm gonna go with four. Okay, what do you guys think? Good, let's see. Oh, good job. All right. Working on my vision, you know. There you go. Looking Great. at things. You did awesome. All right, next one. All right, now we have five choices. He looks like he's looking at four, but is that just to tr trick us and throw us off? It could be. Okay, I... I think I'm gonna go with number one. I'm gonna go yeah. with number three. Okay, you guys? All right, they're all over the place. Yeah. All right, let's see. Three. All right. Did y'all get three? Good job. Good, Good job. job. Yeah. All right, next one. Okay, now we have six choices. <sighs> He's looking up, so maybe I'll eliminate four immediately. Okay. Um, I'm going five. I'm gonna go with six. Okay. What do you guys think? All right, let's take a look. Ah, oh, yes. good job. Got one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Instead of just the first one. Okay, good job. We've got two more, so let's take a look at our next one. Oh, there's seven. Now we've got seven <gasps> choices. I know. That's so there's tricky. So many. Um, I think, I don't know, where are you going? I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> this one's hard. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with one. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with two. Okay, what do you guys think? Awesome, let's take a look. Ooh, good job. You are really doing well at this game. I've been practicing. This is your game. I've been practicing. All right, know? we're going at least to eight. I don't know, what if there's <laughs> even more than that? That's no. gonna be a lot. Let's take a look at our next one. All right, we've got eight. They're so oh, close together. They're too close together. That's so tricky. I think mm. I'm going two on this one. Okay. Just a random guess at this point. I think I'm gonna go with a uh, five. Okay, what okay. do you guys think? All right, let's take a look. Oh, one. one. All right, well, one. you guys did great. I don't know, do you like playing ping pong? I actually do like playing ping okay. pong. Well, why don't we go do that? Yes. You guys, watch this. To 
Today I'm thankful for the hope that you gave me, for the cross when you saved me. You're the friend I call my own. Now I know I'm not alone. So thankful for your love on display, and it will never go away. You're the reason for my song. Now I know we all belong. You show me what peace is all about. It's my turn to go and live it out. Jesus, you're the way without a doubt. I'm gonna love. you gave me for the cross when you saved me you're the friend i call my own now i know i'm not alone so thankful for your love on display and it will never go away you're the reason for my song now i know we all belong you showed me what peace is all about it's my turn to go and live it out jesus you're the way without a doubt is all about it's, it's my turn, turn to go, go and live, live it out jesus you're the way without, without a doubt, doubt. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about peace, while we take a look at the story of two guys who had to make peace through a tough situation. Yes! In your face, game. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I win, I win, you lose. Ha. Um, maybe don't try that at home. Hey guys, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. This week, we're talking about peace which is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Not that we ever argue. Of course not. Psh. Anyway, ready for today's experiment? You know it. So today, we're turning fire to different robot. colors. What? what? This was my week. No way, I checked the calendar. Yeah, but we changed it. Remember that whole conversation? Coding is way cooler. Than fire? I think not. Coding. Fire. Coding. Fire. Coding. Fire. Coding. 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 There's only one way to settle this. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yes. Yes, now you will be the robot and I will code you. Nope. But I won. We'll do your experiment, but I want to be the coder. Fine. Be my guest. I kind of sort of need you to tell me what we're doing with the whole coding thing. So glad you asked. So, have you ever played a game where you have to press a button to attack or jump? You just described about 99% of all video games, so yeah. Well, that jump is thanks to a little thing called code. Code is like the brains of a computer. Whether it's a tablet or a robot, the code tells the computer what to do. See this jump? Yeah. Well, this is all the code that is needed for this jump. Whoa, it takes all of this for one little hop? Yep, 
Computer brains need super specific instructions for every single action in a game. That's actually very cool. Then let's, let's do it. it. Today's experiment is called Robot Make Me a Sandwich. You need to look the part. I will now create the code for Sebastian Robot to make a sandwich. For this experiment, you'll need a loaf of bread, a jar of peanut butter, a jar of jelly, a butter knife, one friend, and a blindfold. Of course. You know, I have to depend on you for the right instructions, just like the way a computer or robot depends on the right code. <laughs> Sebastian Bot is ready to roll. Okay. Um, Sebastian Bot, walk to the table. Error. Say please. But robots don't. Fine. Please walk to the table. Error. Table not found. Okay, um, please walk forward. Ow. I should have clarified. Okay, uh, please walk three steps. Okay. Put out your right hand. Little less. And grab the peanut butter. Uh, don't, not the bread. Um, I do not know. Peanut butter. Feel around for a lid. Unscrew the top. Now, spread the peanut butter on the bread. Please confirm instruction. Please spread the peanut butter on the bread. Okay. I do not know. Nice. Then why didn't you take the bread out of the bag? Sebastian Bot does not know. Bread bag. Ah! Hey, you can't get mad at a robot. It's just doing what you told it to do. Yeah! Sorry. Maybe I need some time to work on this and cool down. I think it's a great idea. In the meantime, it's time for. The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Genesis, which tells us how God created the entire amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. From the beginning, God had a plan to draw people back into relationship. God chose a man named Abram and promised to bless the whole world through Abram and his family, making them more numerous than the stars. Abram trusted God. He and his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot left behind everything they knew. Together, they ventured to the brand new land where God had called them. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Ever play one of those choose your own adventure games? Well, today's story is about two guys who made some tough choices. Ready to play? In the new land where God had called them, Abram and Lot did well and gained sheep and livestock. Those flocks and herds began to grow and grow and grow. Sounds great, right? But there was a big problem. The two of them had so many sheep and livestock that there wasn't enough land to go around. The shepherds and herdsmen who watched over their flocks started fighting. Hey, it's our turn for this field. Are you kidding? We were here first. Don't you bleed at me. He can bleed at whoever he wants. Instead of joining the fight, Abram took Lot aside. Listen, Lot, we shouldn't fight. And our shepherds shouldn't fight either. We're family. Isn't the whole land in front of you? Well, let's separate. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Uh, okay. Lot looked at his options and saw that the whole of the Jordan River Valley was filled with water and plants, perfect for all his flock and herds. Hmm. Which path would you choose? River Valley or wastelands? Yeah, I choose the valley. Well chosen, Lot. Take care. See ya, Uncle Abram. As Lot headed toward the valley, 
Abram went with what was left. As head of the family, Abram could have taken the best land for himself. That would have been fair. But instead, he chose to keep the peace by allowing Lot to choose first. But Abram's difficult choice was not the end of the story. As Abram stood in the new land, God spoke to him. Look around from where you are. I will give you all the land you see. I will give it forever to you and your family. Abram trusted God's promise. He traveled away from the river valley to the great trees of Mamre. There, he pitched his tent and built an altar to the Lord. By giving Lot first choice, Abram ended a fight before things got out of control. But Abram also showed that he was trusting God to take care of him, no matter what. And God was faithful to do just that. In fact, many, many years later, Jesus was born into Abram's family line, and Jesus made peace between God and us. The end. Wow, Abram had every right to take the best land. But he let go of that, not easy. Exactly, Abram cared more about his relationship with Lot than he did about getting the better land. So, what's our part in this story? Well, Abram chose to make peace and chose to let go of what was fair. We can do that too. Say your dad promised to get off work early and take you out for ice cream. But then an emergency came up at work and he had to stay. Ooh, ice cream, right where it hurts. Definitely not fair. It would be super tempting to pout about it for days and make your family miserable. But you can choose to let it go and be patient until your dad can take you a different day. Or maybe it's your turn to pick the snacks, but your mom forgot and let your little brother choose instead. It might not feel fair, but instead of getting mad, you can wait till next time so you can pick the snacks. Think about it in your activities or at school too. Yeah, I remember when I tried out for the play, I really, really wanted the lead. But when I got a smaller part, it made me want to quit because it didn't feel fair. Did you? No, and it was actually super fun. I made a lot of friends. You could have missed that. Exactly. Now, there are times when something isn't fair and needs to be made right. And you can always talk with a grown-up about that. True story. Good point. I think you've both got it. See you next time. Bye. Bye. So here's the thing. You can show you care by letting go of what's fair. I can let go of what's fair. I can't let go of lunch. Then let's finish. Rotate hands towards each other until the upward facing sections of the bread touch, forming a combined structure. Rotate combined structure horizontal. And enjoy a tasty treat. With pleasure. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next, next time. time. Want some? Don't mind if I do. Here you go. Cheers. Mm. Mm. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I, I think I have a sock stuck to my shirt and it's driving me crazy. Static electricity makes my socks stick to my clothes in the dryer all the time. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. Uh, has that ever happened to you, Bray? Yeah. I'm John, and you're watching the So-and-So so and so show. show. John, what is up, my you friend? You know, I was thinking about something. We're called the So-and-So Show, right? Right. And we've determined that we are each a so in the So-and-So Show. If you say so. Mm -hmm. So, I got to wondering, who's the first so, and who's the second so? Oh. 
Well, I guess we're both a so in the so-and-so show, so it doesn't matter which so's first because we're both so-and-so so's. So, so, so and so, so true, so true. Yeah. <laughs> what got you thinking about that? Well, I just read some bad news about one of my favorite bands. Oh, the Cankle Knobs? No. Splash Taters? No. The Rubric Ooblicks? No, I'm talking about Ohms and Watts. Oh, that odd electronica music duo that you like mm -hmm. for some reason. Yeah, they're having some creative differences, which is industry talk for argument, and they may split up the band forever. Oh, bummer. Well, maybe not. I've decided to help them. Oh, why? Please welcome someone who knows stuff. You guys can come over and stand over here. Come on. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. Is there something Brandon, wrong? They don't speak. Oh, because they're mad? No, they've never spoken, but they are mad. Because they can't speak? No, they do that on purpose. Okay. Can we talk normally now? Yeah. All right. So, I recently heard that the two of you are thinking about splitting up because of creative differences. Is that true? And what might those differences be? They don't speak, Brandon. I'm sorry, what? What is that? Duh. It's a theremin. An electronic musical instrument. Oh! Hey. Oh, whoa! They're jamming! So that's all that. What's, which one is that? That's Watts. That's all he does? He claps? He's the best electro clapper in the world, Brandon. And he, what? Who, That's Ohms. He, he theremins? Yeah. All right, so why doesn't he clap with real? Because, because he, because what? it's electro. I mean, but he can make clapping noises Shush. without. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think I know what's going on. So the two of you are having a hard time deciding which instrument should be the driving force in a song, am I right? <laughs> and because of this, you're considering breaking up ohms and watts? You mean to tell me you're willing to rob the world of your beautiful, melodic, transformative, and groundbreaking music? Let's not get carried away. I'm because you're not willing to find a solution? Well, I think Brandon and I agree that would be a tragedy. Yes, yes, tragedy. So if you don't mind, I wanna try something. Watts, why don't you come over here and stand on the other side of me? Right there, right there. Yes, and ohms. Oh, you knew exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> okay. So now I want you to look at each other. Look at each other. And without speaking, decide who goes first with a nod. All right, ohms, start playing. That's beautiful. Right, Brandon? Uh-huh. Okay, now, ohms, let Watts know when he can play with a nod. Now watch, throw it back. Uh-huh. And then back. Yes. Now back. Okay, now the two of you can decide on your own. Go. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Listen to that, Brandon. It's incredible. It's weird. It's the sound of peace. Yeah. I have to dance. And I have to say it's Bible story time with Helen. Please. Hey, hey, what's up? How's it going? Great, Kellen. Did, did I just see the music duo Ohms and Watts aren't breaking up? You did! I love them! You do? Yeah, who doesn't? You got a Bible story for us today, Kellen? I do. And ironically, it's all about keeping the peace between two people. Perfect! 
Take it away. Today's story can be found in the Old Testament. It's about a man named Abram. God had promised Abram that he and his family would grow into a great nation and bless all the people on earth. God also promised to give a whole lot of land to Abram and his descendants. Then God told Abram to move to that land. So he did, and he brought his whole family along. One of his family members was his nephew, Lot. Things started off pretty good, but eventually over time... Wait, what was that? Hello? Hello, sports fans, and welcome back to the only channel bringing you sporting competitions based on reenacted biblical events. Right. BSN, Bible Sports Network. Yeah. Well, let's see where this goes. I'm Mickey Hutch, and as always, I am joined by retired three-time heavyweight wrestling champion of the Tri-City area, Harvey the Brick Burkowski. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to be here, Mick. I wouldn't miss a single moment of sports action, even for a slice of delicious homemade deep dish pizza. <laughs> Smackdown! <laughs> so, Brick, what sort of action can we expect well, today? Well, well, Mick, we've got a real family tree dilemma here. Two family <laughs> members are having an all-out battle of biblical proportions. That's right. The families of Abram and his nephew Lot have grown to huge numbers, <laughs> as well as all of their possessions, livestock, and wealth. I bet they have deep dish pizza. Right. But the battle isn't so much between Abram and Lot as it is with their workers. Yeah, that's right, Mick. Yeah, we have two employees of Abram and Lot who are about to duke it out. Let's watch. Lot's livestock keeps coming over and eating my boss Abram's animal feed. Oh yeah? Well, I think Abram's livestock is eating up all my boss Lot's animal feed. <laughs> Why, I oughta. You oughta, I oughta. Oh, oughta get to it then. I ought. Whoa. Yeah. Things are getting pretty heated. Looks like we're gonna see a brawl after all. Yeah, that's right. A little wrestling never hurt nobody. <laughs> all right. And we'll see how that turns out right after these messages. Oh, um, I guess I guess an I'm the messages that he was talking about. Okay, yeah. So that's exactly what started happening between Abrams and Lot's workers. There were so many of them that they started to fight each other. But before it got too bad, Abram said to Lot. And we're back. And they're back. Wow, just as we went away from break, something amazing happened. Your pizza delivery. <laughs> oh, Brick. Always thinking with your tummy. <laughs> uh, but no, my easily distracted friend, it turns out that Abram has reached out with an olive branch to his nephew Lot. You hit him with an olive branch? Oh, oh smack down! Oh, man. No, that's just a saying that means someone wants to make peace. Uh. Let's listen in. Lot, nephew. Yes, Uncle Abram? Our workers shouldn't fight. We're part of the same family. Very true. Isn't this whole land in front of you? I'll tell you what, let's split it up. If you take the land to the right, I'll take the land to the left. And if you take the land to the left, I'll take the land to the right. Your choice. Wow, what a brilliant move by Abram. <laughs> I'll say SmackDown! <laughs> Abram is offering Lot a chance to maintain peace, and it looks like Abram is willing to give Lot first choice in which direction he wants to go. That sounds like a risky play to me, Mick. What are the options? Let's see. What are my options? Well, you can go over there, or you can go over there. Okay. Uh, let me uh, think about it. Well, take your time. That way, duh. <laughs> Later, Uncle. Hey, come on, everyone. We're going that way. Woohoo! <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay. All right. Ooh, fumble on the play. Yep, definitely lost yards. You know, anyone who's anyone knows, if you let the nephew choose, 
they're going to get the pizza with the best toppings, and you're left with plain cheese. Oh, well said, Brick. Well said. Hey, but let's take a look closely at what actually happened here today. Abram did the unthinkable. He took a loss in order to gain peace. Talk about calling an audible. Truly spectacular. Isn't that right, Brick? Yeah, that's right, Brick. Oh! Smacked up. That's all the time we have, sports fans. On behalf of Harvey the Brick, Brickowski, I'm Mickey Hutch. We'll see you next time. So long. Bye. No? Yeah, that's kind of what happened. Except for the pizza. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> but Abram was so determined to keep the peace that he let his nephew Lot choose the best land. He was willing to give up what was rightfully his because peace was the more important thing. And I think that's pretty awesome. Wow. He chose peace when he didn't have to. That, that's really impressive and really hard to do. I hear you. Sometimes when I get upset with somebody, all I can see is what I think I deserve. But sometimes it's best just to let go of that. The most important thing between two people isn't who wins, but whether or not you can stay friends. Ooh, like Ohms and Watts. Our ultimate example, of course, is Jesus. He gave up his own life for our benefit. He didn't have to because he did nothing wrong, but he chose to set aside what was fair so that we could know and witness God's love. That is incredible. No doubt. Hey. Um, I'll see you guys later, but if you get a chance, can you snag Ohms and Watts' autograph for me? You got it. Score! I'll see ya. I should call Ohms and Watts back right now! Reveal the question! <laughs> Why is it hard to give up what you think is fair? Uh, for me, it's just plain selfishness. I like to keep the things I got. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and I also get scared that if I give up what I think is fair, I may not have enough for myself in the future. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. How about all of you? Why is it hard to give up what you think is fair? Yeah, talk about it together. And until next time, I'm John. I'm Brandon, and this was The, the So-and-So so -and -so Show. You really? You really like these guys, Ohms and Watts? I mean, what is it about them? Well, it's just how they... Boop, 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 boop. You're nowhere in their boop. league. Give me some staccato!
about you, but being fair with everyone can be really hard. But today we learn that we must show that we care by letting go of what's fair. That's how we keep peace. We can keep peace as much as we can if we let go of what's fair. Now that is really hard. So let's pray and ask God to help us to do just that. Dear God, thank you so much that you are always there to help us. God, help us, even when things aren't fair, to show peace, to bring peace in every situation. God, please be near us and help us to do this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, friends, that's all we have for today, but be sure to join me right here next week for Kids Coast at Home. I'll see you next week. Bye. To find ways to get involved at Seacoast Church, text SERVE to 320-320. There are many opportunities for families to find ways to make a difference.